Well, we're here at Fabtech. Omax Water Jets asked me to come out and kind of show you guys the water jet side. I know most of us are plasma people and some have moved to laser. The water jet's gonna let us get into some materials that we can't with either one of those. So we're here at their booth. Gotta find the people I'm looking for. Let's learn a little something. Or stainless. Assuming inlet filters, yep. they work inlet over filters, here. Yep. This is the inlet this is to low the pump. pressure side. This is the low pressure side. This is the high this pressure side. Or something, this or? is coolant. Lubricating the barrel. So yeah. we'll, we'll put coolant down into the coolant housing, which is right here. Okay. And that's going to keep uh, the plunger and the dynamic seal cool. Um, so are you running, is this water or is it actually a coolant? Water. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then the water goes back into uh, a recirculating tank, and then we use it in back into yeah. the pump itself. Yeah. Okay. So we don't waste any water on that side. Okay. All of these. And so we've got some big electric motor under here. Uh, and this is a belt right here. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's a big boy. Yeah. And all these parts are made up in our factory in Kent, Washington. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's just uh, a garnet hopper. Yeah. Sorry. What do you do? So oh, it's pressure under pressure. Open. Yeah, it's yeah. under pressure. That's yeah. why it's held open. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I got it. Garnet, garnet, garnet. We keep talking about it. It's the abrasive grid, as far as I understand, but that's all I know about it. Omax actually sent me just down the way here to their supplier, Barton, and they're gonna tell us more about it. How you doing? Hi, Joe. Today? How are you? Can you tell us about garnet. Two different types of garnet that you uh, that you'll see used in the water jet industry. You have what's known as alluvial garnet. This is a beach deposit or riverbank deposit. You also have hard rock garnet. This is a crushed product. It comes out of a quarry. It's the red in here. That's correct. Wow. Is it magnetic or something? How's it separated? It's actually separated. If you look at the host rock here, the other mineral content is quite a bit lighter. Okay. Uh, so we use specific gravity as the separation process. Cool. The garnet's much heavier. It's what gives the inertia and the cutting power. Yeah. This is more aggressive because it's got sharper edges? That's correct. Okay. Now this, as I said, this went through an erosive process. It's all basically the same mineral. Yeah. And then over here we've got a couple different options. We've got a number of different grades. And the, the mesh is, is just like when you purchase sand or... or gravel right? or or uh, think of grit on a piece of sandpaper yeah. which is how Barton got its start yeah 80 is kind of the sweet spot that's what most people use on this end is a 120 it's finer not quite as fast cutting, but materials? you get 
Uh, glass. Glass okay. cutters love to use 120. Okay. And as far as what the, the, what do we call it? Grain? Mesh? Yes, mesh size. So an 80 is roughly 180th of an inch? It's or? A, uh, 80, think of a one square inch. Yeah. How many holes are in that? So there's 80 in the square, not Correct. nearly? Correct. Okay. And you think about a 120, there's more holes, each hole is going to be a little bit smaller. Yeah. This is yeah, I mean, it's like sheet metal. It's a, originally the number it was a, goes up, they get exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, yeah. hey, I really appreciate it, Joe. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for stopping. Us. Yeah. <laughs> this is around the world that people use beach sand. Highly unrecommended. Yeah. You know, you pulverize beach sand, uh, silica gets in the air. And is there any not recyclability good. to the garnet, or is it one and done? In most cases, it's one and done. Yeah. If you have enough volume, yeah, like, you, you know, thousands of pounds, tons yeah. and tons of garnet, it might make sense to start recycling it. There's, I think, there's, special, there's like mills for it, right? right? You get a filter out, yep. any cotton metal and all. Right, yeah, okay. There's, I think what we'll see over time is that some of the garnet suppliers will start to build large scale recycling plants. So, so they ship it back. Yeah, you'll get a credit they'll, they'll, or something. Right, they'll yeah. sell you the whole package, right? You, okay. you uh, use the garnet, they'll come back. It's going to be another thing that's by, for, by subscription. <laughs> <laughs> something else that's a monthly charge. Right. <laughs> So that wraps us back around to my second question about the cost of running a water jet. And then the ongoing cost of garnet, electricity, all of that. National average of water, your garnet, and your electric, national average for electrical is included in that cost. Yeah. So that right includes here we all actually have a costing diagram of what we're doing. So from the office, I wanted to explain what's going on here with this costing diagram because it answered a lot of questions for me. Basically, you're putting in your power rate, how much water costs you, what you're paying for your garnet, all of that. And then, just like when you pull a job report in SheetCam or whatever software you're using on your table, you're going to see, you know, inches of cut, number of pierces, all of that. This is also calculating out the price for you. You can see that to make these little tweezers, we're going through a dollar twenty cents worth of water, power, and abrasive. Two, almost two and a half pounds. It seems like a lot, but I guess it's not really because the stuff's quite dense. And it's a part that you just could not cut on a plasma table. Some lasers definitely could, but with the five axis that's going on in this machine, you can make this part. In fact, they told me a little bit more about it. Let's jump into that. The tilting nozzle is you can make taper-free parts. When you squeeze it together, you see that the ends match up completely, even though it's cut on an angle that way. Right. Yeah. So they match up. That means that as the jet, the jet has the taper, the uh, the tilt the jet is compensating for that. So it's putting the taper into the scrap so that your workpiece is actually uh, taper free. So we're doing we're cutting out the same pincers here, but then we're doing an edge over the whole thing, or over the logo part. So can we yeah, grab it and then start it so we can lower the water and fill. Oh, that's a, that's a smaller one. Yeah, so they have the etching or the texture there. You guys want a set of tweezers? Sure yeah. thing. You go, oh, so there's obviously a lot more going on here that I'm going to be able to explain in one video and more than I know to be honest. We do have this one great example piece I found that shows the differences in edge quality you can get with different cut speeds. And as much as Omax had these big tables out there that were a lot of fun to play with and look at, they also have their smaller unit that Vlad gave me a tour of, something that would be more at home in a maker space or a school environment. Okay. Is this is going to be the more budget friendly option. Right. Yeah. What we're looking at is the Protomax water jet, which is the uh, gateway water jet designed with education, the educational market in mind. We're looking at trying to uh, 
help and make sure that we have good exposures for uh, for the students. You consider the water jet should be considered as another tool in your toolbox. So educational market is a great, great, great opportunity for students to learn about water jet technology and implement it, implement it later in their careers, as well as as well as my maker spaces, small hobby shops, and light industrial applications. It is wonderful for uh, for uh, piercing and cutting composites as well as glass and brittle other materials on top of the regular met uh, metals that usually get cut. What is this? What is this scheme I see coming out? That's water. Is it, is it water vapor? Is That's it, water vapor. It's a little bit of. Is it something you'd want to be wearing a respirator for if you're doing all day? No. Okay. And there's there's no real post processing required, right? Are you throwing any sort of burr up on the back of it? You know, uh, okay, like on softer materials. Yeah. Softer materials, you'll see every now and then there'll be a burr that forms on the other side. But it really, it's just a function of like the material getting rolled over. So it, technically, it's not really a burr. Yeah. Um, it comes. Just like cross, yeah. Connected right at the edge. Yep, right at the edge. Knock off the wire cover. Yep, yeah, exactly. Comes off super easy. All right, there's some good people. There's a lot of fun to talk to and showed me around. Let me play with equipment. It's amazing what people will let me play with. So if you guys liked it, if you're interested, I'm gonna have some information down in the description. There'll be some links and all that here on the screen. Thanks for stopping by.